suppose that's a perspective thing. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies told through multiple perspectives. How hard is it to find a dead Englishman in Dunkirk Beach? He didn't kill anyone. You wouldn't know where I could get something to go with all this juice, do you? Donuts, aisle four. I was actually hoping for something a little more euphoric. The British guy usually hooks us up. Whose motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. For this list, we're looking at the most popular movies that tell their stories through multiple points of view and recount certain scenes through different character perspectives. A spoiler alert is obviously in effect. And my favorite example of it is Back to the Future 2. I know you'll be surprised to hear. Come argue with me in the comments about it. And tell us your favorite movie told through multiple perspectives. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Bad Times at the El Royale Drew Goddard is one of the smartest writers working in film today. Known for penning intelligent scripts like The Cabin in the Woods, The Martian, and Bad Times at the El Royale. This is not a place for a priest, Father. You shouldn't be here. <laughs> we might need to work on your sales pitch, son. <laughs> the latter film concerns seven strangers meeting at a hotel on the California-Nevada border. The movie plays out like a novel, as it's told in chapters that explain each character's situation and how they got to the El Royale. The story often folds into itself, complete with numerous flashbacks, alternate views of particular events, and one specific scene that's told through three separate perspectives. Do you think you could just take what's mine and I wouldn't come hunt? She ain't yours. The structure is a bit awkward, but it definitely shows off the exciting dexterity of Goddard's writing. Number 9. Cloud Atlas Now, if you want to talk about dexterous writing, may we present you with the Wachowski's Cloud Atlas. Ordinarily, I begin by asking prisoners to recall their earliest memories, to provide a context for the corporatic historians of the future. Co-directed by Tom Tickver, this is arguably the sisters' most popular film after The Matrix, having been adapted from David Mitchell's novel of the same name. <laughs> This wickedly ambitious piece of work contains six separate stories, each with its own distinct time period spanning from 1849 to 2321. It details how each protagonist's actions influence the others, and more broadly and thematically, how decisions of the past influence actions of the present and future. The Atlas, I believe, is the only thing I have done in my life that has value. Yet I know I could not have written it. If I hadn't met you. Mitchell himself has described the story as being about the universality of human nature, and what better way to explore that theme than covering nearly 500 years worth of story? What is an ocean but a multitude of drops? Number 8. Knives Out This film brought the detective mystery back to life, injecting it with some surprising social commentary along the way. So we understand that, that night the family had gathered to celebrate your father's 85th birthday. Yes. How was it? The party? Pre my dad's death? Like all great stories of its kind, Knives Out begins with a death, that of 85-year-old Harlan Thrombey. I'm here because this morning someone dodged a very important question. Who? Oh, me. Linda asked who hired me. Private detective Benoit Blanc is sent to investigate, and he proceeds by asking the individual members of Harlan's family about their actions the preceding night. Throughout the explanations, the audience is given accompanying visuals in the form of flashbacks. Your mom is still undocumented, and if this is your fault, she'll be found out and at best deported, and your family will be broken. But we're not going to let that happen, are we? The flashbacks often intersect with each other, offering different perspectives on certain events depending on who's telling the story. Number 7. Dunkirk With Dunkirk, Virtuosic director Christopher Nolan tried his hand at a World War II drama. And this being Nolan, he had to make it as inventive and elaborate as he possibly could. To do this, he decided to tell the story through multiple perspectives and time periods. The story is told through three points of view. He's a German spy. Don't be daft. 
There's Tommy's, a soldier awaiting evacuation. Dawson, a civilian sailor who rides his personal boat into Dunkirk. You should be at home! Well, there won't be any home if we allow a slaughter across the channel. And Farrier, a Spitfire pilot tasked with defending the evacuation. The stories are also told in different time spans. Oh, she's turning. You must have damaged her. Where's the escort? Oh, I got one in. Tommy's story takes place over one week, Dawson's in one day, and Farrier's in just one hour before they finally intersect at the oil blast rescue and the evacuation of Dunkirk. <laughs> Number 6. Gone Girl Gillian Flynn proved a master storyteller with Gone Girl, a unique mixture of psychological thriller, true crime mystery, and domestic drama. You have to see this. The first half of the film primarily concerns Ben Affleck's Nick Dunn, who becomes the primary suspect in his wife Amy's mysterious disappearance. These yours? No. You read the first clue. Randy professor, naughty student. Every piece of evidence points to Nick being guilty in some capacity. That is, until the story does a complete 180 and shifts its focus to Amy, who is revealed to be alive and on the run. It's where you keep goodies for anniversary five. So, so open the door and look alive. Not only that, it also shows us how Amy managed to successfully frame her own husband. Since high school, he won't ever go away. And I've just tried to be nice to him. Answer his letters, keep him calm. It is a great bait and switch, and it helped make Gone Girl one of the most popular films of 2014. Number 5. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Screenwriter Charlie Kaufman has only written a handful of films throughout his career, but each one crackles with energy and originality. If only I could meet someone new. I guess my chances of that happening are somewhat diminished, seeing that I'm incapable of making eye contact with a woman I don't know. His fifth writing credit was Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, a movie in which a grieving man named Joel Barish has the memories of his girlfriend Clementine erased after she did the same to him. Don't ever leave me. Pretty. 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 Yes, we act. Please let me keep this memory. Just this one. But there's also a second story arc taking place concurrently with Joel's. That of the technicians performing the procedure. In fact, one of the technicians is using Joel's extracted memories to date Clementine in the present, after she had forgotten about Joel. You can run, but you can't hide. Clem, run! It's a unique story that uses science fiction to comment on memory and the progression of romantic love. I can't see anything that I don't like about you. But you right will. Now I can't. But you will. You know, you will think of things. And I'll get bored with you and feel trapped because that's what happens with me. Okay. Number four, Magnolia. Paul Thomas Anderson is another acclaimed screenwriter who proves incredibly ambitious with his scripts. Magnolia is his character hopping masterpiece. There is the story of a fire the water that it took to contain the fire, and a scuba diver named Delmer Darian. While the movie recounts individual stories throughout the course of one day in Los Angeles, they all interconnect in some capacity or another, typically through familial relations. You'll hear three musical notes, and you are to tell me what it might represent that you would find at a picnic. Both Earl Partridge and Jimmy Gator are dying of cancer and estranged from their children. All the intersecting stories are brought together in the movie's famous climax, wherein frogs begin falling from the sky. It's one of the greatest endings in movie history, and it shows the power of telling a story through multiple perspectives, provided the writer has the talent to pull it off. And so it goes, and so it goes, and the book says, we may be through with the past, but the past ain't through with us. Number three, Pulp Fiction. Quentin Tarantino was all about multiple perspectives in his early career. Both Reservoir Dogs and Jackie Brown employed this technique, but none did it as well or as stylishly as Pulp Fiction. Hamburgers, the cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. This movie tells the interweaving stories of various gangsters and criminals. I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. <laughs> Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! There's the diner robbers, Pumpkin and Honey Bunny, 
hitman Vincent and Jules, and crooked boxer Butch. In the fifth, my ass goes down. Vincent serves as the through line through all the stories, sometimes playing a major role and other times having his role cut short. That means that God came down from heaven and stopped the bullets? That's right. That's exactly what it means. The movie is also told out of sequence, allowing the story to both begin and end with the diner robbery, which interweaves the stories of the robbers and the hitmen. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. It is a brilliantly written Academy Award winning piece of work. Whose motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. Number two, Citizen Kane. Often regarded as the greatest film ever made, Citizen Kane proved enormously influential for the medium of film. Part of that has to do with its unique narrative structure, which was revolutionary at the time. Rosebud. As everyone knows, the film opens with Kane's iconic muttering of Rosebud and his subsequent death. Following that, journalist Jerry Thompson interviews various associates of Mr. Kane, all of whom offer their own unique perspectives on his life and legacy. If we could find out what he meant by his last words as he was dying. That Rosebud, huh? Maybe some girl. There were a lot of them back in the early days. These include a late banker, Kane's business manager, his estranged best friend, his butler, and his ex-wife. Each character's story is respectively told through non-chronological flashbacks. You ought to have your head examined! Sending him a letter telling him he's fired with a $25,000 check in it. What kind of firing do you call that? The unique and challenging structure won Orson Welles and Herman J. Mankiewicz an Academy Award. If you could have found out what that rosebud meant, I bet that would have explained everything. No, I don't think so. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Vantage Point. An assassination attempt on the president is told through various vantage points. The president appears to have been shot. I heard two shots, and the president fell. Hey, who's that guy? He's now What's he doing? By his security and okay, fine. Service. Stay with that guy. The Handmaiden, a South Korean film about a deceptive handmaiden to a Japanese heiress. Courage Under Fire. A lieutenant colonel questions if a captain deserves a medal of honor. That's when they threw something overboard. Threw something overboard or something fell off? Well, I, I couldn't tell, sir, but the tank blew. Ah! Ah! Yeah! Man, did it ever blow. Hillary and Jackie. The life of a classic cellist told through her sister's point of view. Uh, Mr. Dupre. Yes? I was wondering whether I could book you for a concert. Oh, no, it's not me you want, it's my sister. But you're Hilary Dupre, the flautist. Yes. Yes, yes, well, it's you I want. Oh. Elephant follows the lives of high school students before a traumatic event. Hey, sir, don't go in, sir. Don't go in there. Don't, trust me, just don't go in there, please. Don't go in. Dad! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Rashomon. When it comes to multiple perspective movies, absolutely nothing beats Rashomon. Written and directed by Akira Kurosawa, this was actually the first Japanese film to receive significant international attention and acclaim. Much of that has to do with its incredible plot device, which sees different characters providing their own subjective outlook on a specific event. <laughs> While the objective frame story obviously remains the same, its subjective telling is warped by those recounting it, as everyone has their own beliefs and self-serving motivations. The film serves as an allegory about truth and subjectivity, and it has even given rise to a phenomenon known as the Rashomon effect, in which eyewitnesses often give contradictory statements. What does your... 
恥ずかしいことを言ってしまったようだな無理もねえ今日というと人を疑らずにいられるはずがねえ Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Make you go to die.